Okay, welcome to the world of photosynthesis practicals that you should have done at school. Um, so, what we're going to look at, this is a really, really very basic GCSE level practical and it's to show the requirements of the various things for photosynthesis. So, I've got a variegated plant and for those who are unfamiliar with the word variegated, that means that part of the leaf is white and part of the leaf is green with chlorophyll. So we're going to test to see where the photosynthesis is going on. If it's only going on where the green bit is, we know that we need chlorophyll. I've got a plant where one of the leaves has been deprived of light for 24 hours and one where lovely Amanda has cut out a pretty little star. Again, this is going to show us the requirement for light. So if it needs light, we should only have photosynthesis where the star is being cut out. And finally, in this super duper bell jar here, we have some, uh, I'll turn it around so that you can potentially see. We have a little jar, a little jar here of potassium hydroxide pellets. This bell jar has been sealed to the tray uh, with Vaseline. So inside of here, the potassium hydroxide is taking away the carbon dioxide. Again, if this plant needs carbon dioxide to photosynthesize, it's going to show that uh, it's not. So, how will we know if the plant's photosynthesizing? We are actually going to test the leaves for presence of starch using iodine. Where starch has been made, so where the plant's been photosynthesizing, making glucose, assembling that glucose into its storage product starch, that's where those leaves will turn blue-black with iodine. However, we have a little bit of a problem because if I just put the leaf onto my white tile and drop some iodine on it, I'm not going to be able to see very much because the um, because of the green of the chlorophyll will mask any colour change. So first of all, we are going to need to remove the chlorophyll from the leaf. And for that, we're going to use ethanol. So I'm going to set up my four tubes, and I'm going to label them so I know which is in which. So I'm going to do um, a V for variegated on this tube. I'm going to put a D on this one for a leaf that's been completely in the dark. I'm going to put an L on this one for the leaf that has its little star cut out of it. And I'm going to put a C on this tube for my carbon dioxide leaf. So you'll see that I've got this rather exciting water bath going on here and uh, it's boiling. And that's because the I need the ethanol to be hot to take the chlorophyll out. Yeah, maybe I'll do that first. So a bit of health and safety there. <laughs> Don't fiddle with your ethanol while your Bunsen's on. So I'm going to put the Bunsen off. That water, as you can see, is at 100 degrees. It's bubbling away nicely. Ethanol um, boils at about 70. So it should still boil and take the chlorophyll out. if I just pop it into the hot water bath. This is my light one, and finally my carbon dioxide one. So, I'm just going to choose a nice variegated leaf. Put my lid back on the ethanol, so I don't have too much excitement in this. And I'm going to remove my leaf and we'll leave the stalk on it, it'll just make things a lot easier. And I'm going to pop it into the ethanol. I'm using a and to get it all away in. That's possibly not the best thing to do anyway. And I've got my leaf that's been in the dark. Oops. 
Sorry, this is quite time consuming, isn't it? And I'm going to fold it up and pop it in. If my cameraman was any good, he'd be doing one of these for me to spin things up. <laughs> oh, he's gone and got me a glass rod to help. Really helpful. Yeah, not doing anything with leaves at all. Uh, ooh, that's a bit squishy and squashy. But anyway, I'm sure I'm just torn it. I'm going to take that bit off. My life's too short. Oops. And my leaf that has been, <coughs> is a little star cut off it. And I'm leaving the stalks on because I'm thinking it'll make it easier to pull them out at the end. Oh no, no, the cameraman's getting me a pair of forceps, right? <laughs> You'd make an admirable, admirable <laughs> nursing assistant in an operating theatre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes. I thought, oh, this is nice and easy. I don't know. I should have used boiling tubes, probably. When I think about it, last time I did this, I used boiling tubes. And last but by no means least, the bell jar comes off. Plants now particularly happy. I'm going to choose quite a small leaf. It's a pain to get into these test tubes. And so this one's the one that's been deprived of carbon dioxide. Okay, made a bit of a mess there, but I'll clear that up. So I'm now going to put all my tubes into the hot water and it's now, I don't know whether you can see that, that ethanol bubbling very nicely. And we should see the ethanol start to turn green. Okay, we're back on the case. So, um, I'm going to start with the variegated one because that seems to have lost the most of its chlorophyll. And so what I'm going to do is use my forceps, grab hold of the stalk and pull it out. And you can see that the chlorophyll has been left behind and I've got a lovely, almost entirely white leaf. They are quite stiff when they come out, they, you know, because of the alcohol dehydrating. And, and so the best thing to do, because you want to spread it out to have a look at it, is to dip it into the hot water and that will make it more spreadable. So, I'm just going to uh, spread this out. So this is my variegated one. And so, where it was white, what we're expecting is that it, if it, if chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis, that where it was white, it won't have made any starch. Where it's green, it will have made starch. And so, this one blobs of my iodine arm. And I'll just uh, point out here that the way to use the staining bottles is to keep your fingers behind the stain. That's the whole point of a staining bottle, really. And we'll just leave that to allow the starch to react with the iodine. So, moving on then, while we're just waiting for that, before we look at the results, this is the one that's been in carbon dioxide. All of those come out, put them into the hot water. And, and really you shouldn't leave it for too long in the hot water because then the starch grains sort of uh, come out of the leaf um, into the water and then you won't get any results at all. I think it might have happened to me. A variegated leaf. It's not looking terribly convincing. Obviously in an exam, you know, you're not going to see photographs and videos of these things happening. They're going to be asking you questions about it. So this one, this has been deprived of carbon dioxide, so I'm really not expecting this one to give me any blue-black at all. Okay that. Um, which one's best? I'll tell you what 
what's lovely about this experiment that the ethanol boils just because it's been sort of, you know, popped into boiling water. It always fascinates me that. It's probably the best bit of chemistry. So, I can't remember which one. Sorry, this one's been completely in the dark. You can see it's not, it's chlorophyll, it's not come out particularly well. Okay, I'm trying to do this properly now and not just tip it on. So again, not really expecting any colour change here. And you see that although we've still got a bit of green, we could actually see if there was a colour change. To say that very dirty leaves, not terribly convincing, is it? Change them with a bit more green on perhaps. Anyway. Such is life. <coughs> That's the beauty of biology. Sometimes living things just don't do quite what you expect them to do. And finally, this is the one with the lovely star cut out of it. I'm really hoping this one gives me a lovely, 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 lovely black colour. So okay, we've left these a few minutes to let the, any starch present in the leaf react with the iodine and we can see that on our variegated leaf where that sort of central patch was green, that's the place where we've got this really strong reaction, it's made lots and lots of starch, where it was right, white around the outside, no starch at all, so that tells us that we need chlorophyll in order to make the starch. This is, uh, I'm thinking this might be be slightly less convincing on the basis that it seems to have made a little bit of starch and it might just be that it's not been in that bell jar for long enough um, so we've got little bits of black here but most of it is just brown here where it's been in the dark we've got absolutely no starch synthesis at all showing that light's absolutely required for photosynthesis and here where we have that lovely star shape cut out and you can see that we've got little bits around the leaf veins. I think that's probably sucrose being transported out to the leaf margins and then being converted back into starch perhaps. Um, but most of it is down here where that star shape was cut out of the foil. So lovely jubbly. That's it. Nice simple experiment. <laughs>